What is going on guys, MJ2045 here, and I'm so excited today because I just got an exclusive copy of the P-Bandai High Grade Correct Century Borjarnon from Turn A Gundam to take a look at. Finally, another Correct Century kit. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now I know it is a justifiably lazy release, but come on Bandai, you don't have to be that lazy. Yes, all the runners are copied over from the High Green Universal Century Zaku 2 from 2021, and yet they can't be bothered to change up the colors? What an absolute shame! Not even the manual is done from the ground up for people who want to know more about the Borjarnon, but uh, I guess there's not much point to provide more information about it, since it's just a Zaku for the correct century. Uh, but whatever, it's the same build, perfect for beginners, simple yet straightforward, but I've touched it up ahead of time so as to move the review along and not dwell on the colors. But in all honesty, colors aside, this is a pretty good looking representation of the Borjarnon. Sure, nothing could have gone wrong from literally reskinning the high grade Universal Century Zaku 2, but it does look quite nice refined from the rather bulbous look of the line art, and they did not use a status of a grunt suit as an excuse to skimp out on effort either, as despite the simple surface detail, the way the upper panels are separated does indirectly add some panel detail to the design. Best yet, the only sticker is the mono eye, but it does carry over the one flaw that the Zaku had, the lack of an actual protruding eye to mark the middle. So you'd have to wing it, whether you're applying the sticker or just painting the eye on there. There are also holes in the shoulder shield for equipping the ballistic equipment from Gundam Bill Fighters Battlelog, which is neat, but otherwise, this 12.5cm tall kit is definitely a great looker for a very cheap price. Articulation starts with an unencumbered double ball jointed head and a movable eye from using the tab underneath it. The arms can swing out very far, further facilitated from the torso joints that allows them to also shrug. The arms can also rotate all the way and go out perpendicularly to the body. Both the spike ball and the shoulder shield can be adjusted to free up some space for movement as well. There is a rotation above and at the elbow that is also double jointed, and the forearms and wrists are both ball jointed. The ball joint at the waist provides impressive crunches and rotation. The front and side skirts can move, while the back skirt is stationary. Unfortunately, there's no central leg gimmick, not that it needs it anyway from the full forwards kick, decent backwards kick, and essentially the full splits. The same can be said for the soft skirts as well, but this time, full front splits are possible as well. There's a thigh swivel, double jointed knees, feet that can move to a very wide degree, and a movable ankle flap. Altogether, the articulation of the Borjarnon is gymnastic. There is almost no limit to the poses that you can pull off with this thing. Nothing is prone to falling off either, which is definitely the cherry on top. In terms of accessories, you have a pair of holding hands, trigger finger hands, a relaxed left open hand, and a right holding hand tailored for holding the heat hawk, with an extra protrusion from the thumb to create a hole better fitted for the handle. Speaking of the weapons, I needn't say much, as they are the generic Zaku loadout copying parts from the Zaku high mobility type, consisting of the machine gun, heat hawk, and the Borjarnon bazooka. Both ranged weapons need to have their scopes painted in it because there is no sticker for those, otherwise they can be held in their respective hands and pose no weight issues. Both the ranged weapons have a moving scope and foregrip, while the bazooka has the moving primary handle. As for storage, there is a clip for the heat hawk to be stored on the side skirts, a clip can be folded down from the basket for the bazooka, or the extra ammo drum for the machine gun can be stored on the baskets instead. However, all of these storage options, apart from the bazooka storage, are absent on the soft skirts, so do bear that in mind if you do use them. Finally, an adapter is included for propping this guy up on an action base. Leftovers include the commander type helmet of the original Zaku 2, as the actual commander of the Borjanons is based on the Zaku 1, an extra hardpoint piece for the shoulders, and the weapon storage rack I have no idea how to use that is left over from the high mobility Zaku. Not much use for them for the Barjanon's case honestly. 
being a grunt suit that is dirt cheap with a simple build and scrape results, on top of gymnastic flexibility at little to no payoff, I'd put the high grade correct century Borjan on at strongly recommended. Being based on the universal standard, it can also be stripped for parts in case you want to customize it with other model kits. And of course, it can be also used for a spoof like this. Yes, this is in fact just the hybrid Universal Century Zaku 2 repainted into the Borjanon color scheme. I frankly don't think I fooled anyone there. But hey, if I did, April Fools! But what I said in this video, apart from this thing being an actual Borjanon release, is genuine. So you can take this video as a review of whether or not to buy the high grade revived Zakus. And hey, this will definitely help the turn A Gundam feel less lonely until the next real high grade correct century model kit enters the market, whenever that might be. But let's be frank, it'd probably be the real high grade Borjanon in the P Bandai market. And that's all for me. Thank you for watching, drop a like and a comment if you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more content like this, and feel free to follow me on social media with the links down below. That said, take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.